an organization is exploring advanced cryptographic techniques to secure communication channels. They want to ensure both confidentiality and integrity of the transmitted data. Which technique would be the most suitable for achieving these dual objectives? Is it A, the digital signatures? Is it B, symmetric encryption? Is it C, asymmetric encryption? Is it D, hashing with salting? Or is it E, steganography? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C, asymmetric encryption. Asymmetric encryption, also known as public key cryptography, is the most suitable technique for achieving both confidentiality and integrity. It involves a pair of keys, public and private, where data encrypted with one key can be decrypted by the other. The public key can be freely shared whilst the private key is kept confidential, ensuring secure communication. Consider a scenario where two parties, Alice and Bob, want to communicate securely over an insecure channel. Alice uses Bob's public key to de encrypt the message, and only Bob, possessing the corresponding private key, can re decrypt and read the original message. This process ensures the confidentiality and integrity of the communication. And now for the incorrect answers, digital signatures are primarily used for ensuring the authenticity and integrity of a message, not for encrypting the entire message for confidentiality. While symmetric encryption is efficient for bulk data encryption, it does not provide the dual assurance of confidentiality and integrity of asymmetric encryption does. Hashing with salting is used for protecting stored passwords and ensuring the integrity of data, but it doesn't provide encryption for secure communication. And steganography is the art of hiding information, but it doesn't inherently provide encryption for securing communication channels. And for the next question of our exam, question number two. And the question states, an organization is storing sensitive customer data in a database and wants to enhance security by ensuring that even if the database is compromised, the data remains confidential. Which cryptographic technique would be the most effective for this purpose? Is it A, symmetric encryption? Is it B, digital signatures? Is it C, hashing with salting? Is it D, tokenization? Or is it E, asymmetric encryption? You now five seconds. And the correct answer is A, symmetric encryption. Symmetric encryption is most effective for ensuring the confidentiality of stored data. It uses a single key for both encryption and decryption, making it suitable for protecting sensitive information in a database. Imagine an organization storing credit card information in a database. Using symmetric encryption, the entire database of specific fields can be encrypted. Even if the database is compromised, the encrypted data remains unreadable without the correct key. And now for the incorrect answers, digital signatures are used for verifying the authenticity and integrity of data, but do not provide encryption for confidentiality. Hashing with salting is primarily used for password protection and ensuring data integrity, not for encrypting data for confidentiality. Tokenization is more suitable for protecting data during transactions, not for enhancing the confidentiality of stored data. And asymmetric encryption is efficient for secure communication, but may not be the most practical choice for encrypting large sets of stored data due to performance considerations. And for the next question of our exam, question number three. And the question states, a security professional is tasked with implementing a robust solution to protect passwords stored in a database. The organization emphasizes the importance of both confidentiality and integrity. Which cryptographic technique should be employed? Is it A, digital signatures? Is it B, hashing with salting? Is it C, symmetric encryption? Is it D, asymmetric encryption? Or is it E, tokenization? And now five seconds. And the correct answer is B, hashing with salting. Hashing with salting is the most appropriate technique for storing passwords with an emphasis on both confidentiality and integrity. It ensures that even if the database is compromised, the passwords remain secure and tamper resistant. Consider a scenario where a database stores user passwords. Hashing with unique salts ensures that identical passwords produce different hash values, enhancing security. Even if an attacker gains access to the hashed passwords, the salts make brute force attacks significantly more challenging. And now for the incorrect answers, digital signatures are used for authenticating the origin and integrity of data, not for hashing passwords for storage. While symmetric encryption is suitable for data confidentiality, it's not the primary optimal choice for securely storing passwords. Asymmetric encryption is more suitable for secure communication, but it's less practical for securely storing large set of passwords. And tokenization is applied for secure transactions, but it's not designed for secure password storage in a database. 
And for the next question for exam, question number four. And the question states, an organization is exploring advanced cryptographic solutions to ensure the integrity and authenticity of configuration files for critical systems. Which technique should they implement for signing these configuration files? Is it A, symmetric encryption? Is it B, hashing with salting? Is it C, asymmetric encryption? Is it D, tokenization? Or is it E, digital signatures? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is E, digital signatures. Digital signatures are the most suitable technique for ensuring the integrity and authenticity of configuration files. They involve the use of asymmetric encryption to create a unique signature, providing a strong mechanism for verification. In the context of critical system configurations, a digital signature ensures that the configuration file remains unchanged and originates from a trusted source. The private key is used to sign the files, and the corresponding pub public key verifies the signature. And now for the incorrect answer, symmetric encryption is more focused on data confidentiality and is not designed for creating digital signatures. Hashing with salting is used for data integrity but lacks the public-private key pair mechanism for verification that digital signatures offer. Asymmetric encryption is part of the digital signature process but is not the sole mechanism. The entire process involves more than just encryption. And tokenization is applied in secure transactions but it's not suitable for creating digital signatures for configuration files. And for the next question for exam, question number five. And the question states, a company is implementing a security solution to protect sensitive data during online transactions. The goal is to replace sensitive information with unique symbols. Which cryptographic technique is most appropriate for this purpose? Is it A, asymmetric encryption? Is it B, tokenization? Is it C, symmetric encryption? Is it D, digital signatures? Or is it E, hashing with salting? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is B, tokenization. Tokenization is the most suitable cryptographic technique for securing sensitive data during online transactions by replacing it with unique symbols. It provides an added layer of security without exposing the actual information. In an online transaction scenario where a customer enters credit card details, tokenization replaces the card numbers with unique tokens. These tokens are used for transactions processing, ensuring that sensitive information is not exposed during the process. And now for the incorrect answers, asymmetric encryption is more focused on secure communication and is not typically used for replacing sensitive information with tokens. Symmetric encryption is efficient for data confidentiality, but it's not designed for secure data replacement during transactions. Digital signatures are used for data integrity and authenticity verification, not for replacing sensitive information, and hashing with salting is primarily used for data integrity and password protection, not for securing data during online transactions. And for the next question for exam, question number six. And the question states, an organization is deploying a cloud-based solution to store and process sensitive data. What security measures should be implemented to ensure the confidentiality of data whilst it's being processed in the cloud environment? Is it A, data masking? Is it B, homomorphic encryption? Is it C, blockchain? Is it D, secure sockets layer or SSL? Or is it E, multi-factor authentication or MFA? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is B, homomorphic encryption. Homomorphic encryption allows computations to be performed on encrypted data without decrypting it. This advanced cryptographic technique ensures that sensitive data remains confidential even during processing in the cloud. Consider a scenario where a cloud service performs computations on sensitive financial data encrypted with homomorphic encryption. The results are obtained without revealing the original data, maintaining confidentiality throughout the processing. And now for the incorrect answers, data masking involves obscuring specific data within a database, but may not provide the same level of security during processing as a homomorphic encryption. Blockchain is a distributed ledger technology that ensures data integrity and immutability, but does not directly address the confidentiality of data during processing. SSL secures data during transmission, but does not address the security of data whilst being processed in a cloud environment. And multi-factor authentication in, in, enhances user authentication, but does not specifically protect data confidentiality during processing. And for the next question for exam, question number seven. And the question states, 
a company is implementing a comprehensive data loss prevention or DLP strategy to safeguard sensitive information. What technology should be employed to prevent unauthorized transmission of sensitive data outside the corporate network? Is it A, intrusion detection system or IDS? Is it B, endpoint detection and response or EDR? Is it C, digital rights management or DRM? Is it D, virtual private network or VPN? Or is it E, security information and event management uh, or SIEM? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C, Digital Rights Management or DRM. Digital Rights Management is a technology that controls access to and usage of dig digital content, including sensitive information or data. It prevents unauthorized transmission by restricting access based on predefined policies. In a scenario where an employee attempts to email sensitive documents outside the corporate network, DRM can prevent the transmission, ensuring that data stays within the authorized boundaries. And now for the incorrect answers, intrusion detection systems or IDS detects and alerts of suspicious activities but may not have the granular control to prevent data transmission. Endboy de detection and response or DEDR, EDR focuses on monitoring and responding to endpoint threats but may not specifically prevent unauthorized data transmission. Virtual private network or VPN secure communications but do not control data transmission based on content policies and security information and event management or SIEM aggregates and analyzes security event data but does not prevent unauthorized data transmission. And for the next question of our exam, question number 8. And the question states, a security analyst is tasked with enhancing the organization's web application security. What technology should be implemented to protect against SQL injection attacks and ensure the integrity of database queries? Is it a web application firewall or WAF? Is it B intrusion prevention systems or IPS? Is it C secure shell or SSH? Is it D transport layer security or TLS? Or is it E capture? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is A, Web Application Firewall, or WAF. A Web Application Firewall is specifically designed to protect web applications from various attacks, including SQL injection. It filters and monitors HTTP traffic between a web application and the Internet, preventing malicious activities that could compromise database integrity. In the case of an attempted SQL injection attack, a WAF can analyze the incoming requests, detect suspicious SQL injection patterns, and block the malicious traffic, ensuring the integrity of database queries. And now for the incorrect answers, whilst IPS or intrusion prevention systems can detect and prevent certain attacks, a dedicated WAF is more effective in protecting against SQL injection within the web applications. Secure Shell or SSH is a protocol for secure remote access and does not directly address web application security. Transport Layer Security or TLS secure communication, secures communication between clients and servers, but is not designated to prevent SQL injection attacks. And CAPTCHA is a challenging response test to determine whether the user is human, but does not provide protection against SQL injection. And for the next question of our exam, question number 9. And the question states, an organization is implementing a security solution to protect against advanced persistent threats, or APTs. What technology should be employed to detect and respond to sophisticated and prolonged cyber attacks? Is it A. Honeypots? Is it B. Security Information and Event Management or SIEM? Is it C. Antivirus Software? Is it D. Intrusion Prevention System or IPS? Or is it E. Network Access Control or NAC? You now have 5 seconds. And the correct answer is B. Security Information and Event Management, or SIEM. SIEM systems collect, analyze, and respond to security events and incidents. They are essential for detecting and responding to APTs by correlating data from various sources and identifying patterns indicative of advanced threats. In the context of an APT, a SIEM system can analyze anomalous activities such as unusual access patterns or multiple failed login attempts, triggering alerts and enabling timely response. And now for the incorrect answers, honeypots are decoy systems designed to attract attackers but may not provide comprehensive detection and response capabilities like an SIEM. 
Whilst antivirus software is essential for detecting known malware, it may not be sufficient for detecting and responding to sophisticated APTs. IPS can block specific threats but may not have the holistic analysis capacities or capabilities of an SIEM for APT detection. And NAT, NAC or Network Access Control controls access to a network but does not replace the comprehensive monitoring and response capabilities of an SIEM. And for the last question of our exam, question number 10. But before that, ladies and gents, don't forget to drop a sub and share this video with your friends. And now back to our exam, an organization is concerned about the security of its internal communication and wants to ensure end-to-end -end encryption. What technology should be implemented to achieve this level of confidentiality? Is it A, VPN? Is it B, IPsec? Is it C, PGP or pretty good privacy? Is it D, DNS security extensions or DNSEC? Or is it E, unified threat management or UTM? You know, five seconds. And the correct answer is C, PGP or pretty good privacy. PGP provides end-to-end -end encryption for email and other forms of communication. It uses public key cryptography to secure the contents of messages, ensuring that only the intended recipient can decrypt and read the information. In the context of internal communication, employees can use PGP to encrypt their messages, preventing unauthorized access even if the communication traverses internal networks. And now for the incorrect answers, VPNs provide secure communications over networks but may not offer end-to-end -end encryption for internal communication. IPsec secures network communication at the IP layer but does not provide end-to-end -end encryption for messages. DNS security extensions ensure the integrity of DNS data but does not address to end-to-end -end encryption for internal communication. And UTM combines multiple security features but does not specifically focus on end-to-end -end encryption for internal communication. Ladies and gents, this is the end of our exam. If and only if you found this video informative, make sure to drop a sub and share this video with your friends. I hope you found this video useful and I will see you guys next time.